Last night during happy hour, Mark Martin blew his right front tire and hit the wall hard, damaging his car. He was able to get out of the car and walk away under his own power. Martin was then taken to the track hospital for medical attention. Upon his return, Ralph Shaheen had a chance to talk with Mark Martin. Mark, can you tell me what happened and are you okay? Yeah, I cut a right front tire there and uh, I hit the wall about as hard as I've ever ever tangled with it, but uh, I'm a little bit sore, uh, but I'm going to be okay. We had a fabulous car. This Eagle One car is the best restrictor plate car I've ever driven. We really had a chance at this race, but uh, pretty disappointed that it tore up, but there wasn't anything we could do about it. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a, that's the brakes. What are the extent of the injuries that you have? I see your hand taped up and so forth. I can't, uh, I'm in a lot of pain uh, in a lot of places, but my left knee and my left wrist is real, real, real sore. Uh, just in the joints, just took a heck of a lick and holding onto the steering wheel, you know, on my left hand, just shocked my wrist pretty good. I'm okay, but uh, I wouldn't want to try to run a marathon or anything right now. I'm feeling pretty beat down. Do you think you'll be able to drive tomorrow? Oh, I know. I'd, I'd be ready to drive tonight. If they were starting in five minutes, I'd line up and go. Okay. You heard Mark Martin say his wrist is real, real, real sore. They checked last night, and the, the examination revealed nothing, but another check this morning revealed a broken wrist. He will wear a fiberglass cast on his left wrist. That's more flexible. Uh, whether or not he will race tonight, he will indeed, although he will be starting dead last. Earlier, we were talking about Mark Martin's difficulties last night with his car and his physical ailments. He's just arrived at the track, and he's standing by with Ralph Shaheen. Ralph. Craig, let's take a look at the cast. Mark, this uh, fiberglass class that he put on you earlier today, how is it? Will it hinder you tonight, and how do you feel? I don't like the cast much. I'd much rather drive without it, but uh, we've got to work with it tonight, so I'll have to make the, you know, whatever uh, uh, compromises I have to to try to get the job done. Uh, the Eagle One Valvoline team has done everything that they could do to get me in, you know, a car that'll be competitive again tonight. And I just hope that I'm able to give them, you know, what I'm, I hope I'm able to do my share tonight for them. Is it broke all the way through or just a fracture, a hairline fracture? What did you have? It, uh, it's pretty obvious on the, on the x-ray what you got there. I mean, it's not something you have to look very hard to find. Uh, I didn't know it until 2 o'clock today. Uh, last night I convinced them that it wasn't, you know, that it didn't hurt that bad. And, and uh, you know, we made the splint this morning, uh, went to, to test it in the car to see how it was going to work in the car and decided to stop by and, and have the x-rays just for uh, comfort. And, uh, you know, the x-rays turned up, uh, you know, something that we didn't expect. So it's, uh, I'm doing well. Considering what I've been through, uh, I could be doing better. I sh could be doing worse. And right now, I guess I'm a lot more thankful for the things that are that I do have than I was a day ago. All right, Mark. Thank you very much. Greg, you see this T-shirt here? That's Mark's son, Matt, in his TQ right there. Matt was racing over in Central Florida last night. And just like that, unfortunately, Matt had an accident as well in the feature event. He is okay, however. And he even did an exhibition race out here earlier tonight. So the Martin family already racing at Daytona today but just as dramatic as the story of the car in third place in qualifying. Last night, final moments of practice. Car number six, Mark Martin, at over 190 miles per hour, slams the wall with a cut-down tire, destroys the primary race car, and nearly destroyed himself. A broken wrist, a bent knee, a battered guy, but no one better represents this sport than Mark Martin, who later said, I'm in a lot of pain in a lot of places, but if they said we were going to start this race in five minutes, I'd be there and I'd be in it. He'd be one of the great ones to watch tonight, too. He will be one of the greats from dead on last. That number six, Mark Martin, started dead last. Broken wrist if you're just joining us. 
bad knee, painful ribs after a crash in the final moments of practice. Started 43rd, worked his way to 27th, stabilized, stayed there, climbed to 24th momentarily, and right now Mark Martin is still struggling here after taking those first positions. Looks like it's going to be a while before he makes another run towards the front, but we're getting close to that first pit stop. And it looks like it's going to be under green, and we may see him making some more moves as he is right now, coming up through the field from dead last. Now let's pick up the Mark Martin story. Injured at Daytona, a broken wrist, a chipped rib, and then knee surgery on Wednesday. The crew literally has to help him into and out of the race car. Buddy Baker, you drove with a broken leg back in the 1970s. What's Mark dealing with there? The biggest thing he's dealing with right now, mentally, he has to black it out when the race starts. I can remember the biggest thing I had to do was position myself in the car where I did not feel the injury that I had. I made this makeshift brace, and I tell you what, I put my leg up in there, and I pulled it back into high gear, threw my leg up in that brace, and I said, oh, my God, I forgot it's going to vibrate. It was like somebody taking their finger and going in your eyeball like that. Really hurt. I moved my leg around, finally got comfortable. I had a great car, so it wasn't tough after I got going. But boy, when I first started, I said, I'll never make it. And like in any sport, you have to play hurt. Mark Martin told us earlier today in his team transporter that, yes, he hurts, but he's ready to race. I feel like I'll, I'll race fine. I just uh, wish I was racing uh, competitively, more competitively than what I am. This Valvoline Cummins team really deserves more and, and uh, and I feel like I'm capable of more, but uh, I guess that's the frustration is not being able to, to get it, to get it, you know, get to it. Because, uh, uh, you know, even though I'm in a lot of pain, I can drive the car. I just, uh, I just can't get the car to work. And you know something? If we see Mark Martin in victory lane later today, how many of you folks are going to be surprised? The man is tough, and he could just grab the win and take it on to the house before this day is done. Mark Martin hobbling Steve Burns, to say the very least. Boy, Eli, you're exactly right. He got hurt in that practice accident at Daytona a week ago Friday. He has a hairline fracture of his left wrist. His ribs are banged up and sore. And just Wednesday night, he found out that he would have to have knee surgery. Arthroscopic surgery was performed on Wednesday evening. It takes two crew members to get Mark into the car, but you know the worst thing is right now, he's frustrated and angry. He doesn't feel like he's 100%, and any time Mark Martin climbs in a race car, he wants to go to the front. Is now in 38th spot. Jeff Burton is up to 35th position as we ride with Mark Martin. And for those of you who wonder if Mark Martin can get it done while he's driving hurt, I will let you know that he indeed can. Back in 1980, when he was running in the ASA, he started a race at Milwaukee with two broken ankles and managed to win the race despite the pain that he was in. Eli, just before the race started, Mark Martin radioed his team and said, guys, thanks for hanging in there with me through this. I'm frustrated about it. I want to be better. I think the car is better than me, but he apologized and thanked his team. He said, I'll be much better by Pocono, but as you guys said, he'll do everything he can to get to the front today. Matt Kenseth is here as a backup standby driver, but Matt told me at the hotel, he said, I'll be surprised if I do any racing. I would be, too. Mark Martin's just a tough individual. He's in perfect health other than the injuries that he has. He works out every day, so if anybody can go with injuries, it's certainly Mark Martin. If you're curious about the injured Mark Martin, he is in 21st position right now where we get a look at Mark Martin. He's uh, ten and a half seconds behind Jeff Gordon. How's he feeling? Well, Eli, the good news is, I talked to the crew, the good news is that he feels pretty good. He's not complaining of any pain, which is amazing. But the bad news is he's fighting a loose race car right now. So, again, he feels okay, but the car is fighting, or he is fighting, a loose race car. If you're a Joe Nimichek fan, he's back on the track 33 laps down. They have just wrapped up the uh, repairs. Yeah, somebody's got into the back of Mark Martin's car. This is a, uh, the camera takes a good picture of the blimp, but that's about all you can see out of it there is it looks scoured as it's been turned up because somebody else has got into the back of the Jarrett car. Yep, somebody gave the old camera a shot there. Problems, caution, big problems. Turn two. Martin is there. Kenny Irwin is there. Steve Park is there. 
And amazingly, everybody is back under power and moving away again. At one point, there were about six or seven cars going in all sorts of directions off the number two corner. And we are under caution, lap number 114. Caution for the third time today. Why are we under caution? Watch this. Oh, Mark Martin got hit from behind by Kenny Irwin Jr. Well, he dodged the first two crashes. Couldn't dodge that one. Watch it again here. Oh, oh there's, there's the reason. The reason. Rich Bick Bickle. Bickle got sideways. Martin checked up, and that's when Irwin tagged him. Not Kenny's fault, really. That'll be 11th spot changing hands right there. Martin yielding to Dale Jarrett. So Jarrett takes 11th, and Martin, with whom we're riding, now back to 12th. Still Yeoman's duty. Uh Mark Martin. Gutsy yeah. stuff. I, I tried to drive a race car one time. I broke my left wrist running at Beach Ridge Speedway in Maine. Came back the next week with my left wrist in a cast. I made it about six laps and said, no way I can do this. And I was out for about six weeks. And how Martin is doing this is absolutely beyond me. I tried it. I couldn't. Not at all. For race fans everywhere, gutsy performance. Knee surgery, fractured wrist, banged up ribs. Gutsy performance. You know, I want to thank all the race fans for their support. I've said all along that it's more important the effort, not the result. And then I got all disappointed with the result, like it was not a good effort uh, at Daytona. It was a great effort this weekend for the Valvoline Cummins race team. All these guys have really stood behind me and, and, uh, and the fans and everybody else. We gave an A-plus effort. We got a B result, you know. Uh, I'm a little bit angry that we lost two spots at the end based on fuel. Uh, but, you know, we did get a top 10 and we overcame a lot. Uh, sorry qualifying effort by me and the spin and a tangle in another accident. To be able to come back and have a halfway contending car is pretty good. All right, he's a racer, Eli. Quite a day for Mark Martin. Can you believe it's just been 22 days since Mark Martin was injured at Daytona? A broken wrist, a broken knee. Hey, he's in the car. He said he let the team down at Loudon. The pain distracted him. It takes two team members to get him into that number six race car. But he said he's ready to go. He's pain free today. Believe it or not, he has never won on this, on this racetrack. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Well, it was routine pit stops for nearly all the leaders. In fact, everyone in the field. Some guys took on two tires. Most guys took on four. I'm standing in Mark Martin's pit. When he came into pit, they changed right side tires first, came around nice and smooth, changed the left side tires. Unfortunately, a tire got away from a crew member, rolled across pit road. That is a no-no. Mark Martin will now have to come back in the pits for a stop-and-go penalty. That'll put him to the tail end of the lead lap cars when he goes back out. And here he comes, live on the pit road. You saw that replay of the problem on pit road. And here's Mark Martin coming in. You want to see some dramatic racing? We'll follow this number six car. We get ready to crank it up once again under green. Taking a moment under caution. Randy? Mark Martin for the stop and go penalty. You're wondering why they're reaching in the cockpit right now. Mark has had some trouble with his radios earlier on in this race. He couldn't speak to his crew chief, Jimmy Fennick. So as long as they're in here for the stop and go penalty, they're trying to clear up that problem because we still have a good three hours of racing probably left here this afternoon. Mark Martin, uh, a little misfortune early on, but uh, he's got a great race car, got a lot of heart. He'll come back here this afternoon. Up to six spot, number six, Mark Martin. Remember, he started outside of the front row, fell all the way back, got a penalty. Tire jumped out on pit road, cost him a stop and go. He was under caution just then, so he took the advantage of working on the radio. Came in a couple of times, but he was all the way on the tail end of that lead lap, well back with 37, 38. Here he is, struggling with that broken wrist, that broken knee, those bruised ribs, and he's right back in the top 10, wanting to challenge Earnhardt. Look at the headrest on his helmet. Just move right over there as he goes through the corner. His head's trying to just pull right over. So they've got that aluminum headrest. Good thing they do, buddy. What 
too many shifts here. You talk about getting in gear in a hurry. No clutch whatsoever. Just jerks it back in the gear. Right there, he's back into uh, third gear as he comes around through the corner. You watch his head move to the right and up a little bit. He is constantly checking his rear view mirror to see where everybody is to make sure that no one is in his quarter panel when he comes down on entry to a turn. There he is looking back again or on the outside as he comes off the turn to move out toward the wall. 55 miles and right back, ready to find it out. Oh, wow, what an event this guy is putting on for these fans. Packed house at Pocono, Pennsylvania. I'm watching, here comes Mark Martin on the inside of Dale Earnhardt as they head down the back straightaway. Martin very quick in that part of the racetrack. Back to fourth. Mark Martin. And if you're just joining us, this is the story of the race for so many of us. Here is a guy with a broken knee, a broken wrist, bruised ribs. It takes two guys to load him in there, and he comes out, runs up for the front row in qualifying, has fought his way back from the end of the longest line, 35th to 36th, and he's ready to challenge the leaders. This is Batesville, Arkansas's Mark Martin, and if you wanted to find what stock car racing is all about, the name is Mark Martin. Mark Martin coming in. There can't be much left of that scrappy little guy from Arkansas. What a run he has made. For him, another day, didn't win it. He'll just get ready in two weeks to go to Indianapolis and be in a little better health. He'll have his wrist back, maybe his knee with that pin in it will be a little better. The bruised ribs, he gets out. Uh, well, we're right with him as he gets ready to clamber out. What a run today by Mark Martin for third spot. He don't, Congratulations, He don't Mark. clamber out. They come and get him. They have, to, they have to help him get out of that race car physically. Jimmy Finney. Jimmy Finney. Is, right. Yeah, <laughs> crew chief sticking his head in there. Oh, he's going to come out by himself. Oh, he's no, he's not. No, he started. Oh, look at the paint on his face. Oh. It's been a day's work. Sean Parker helping him out. What a great champion that guy is. Let's visit the winner today of this 500. Steve Burns is with Bobby Labonte. Ken, Bobby Labonte said he didn't like this. Uh, he doesn't want to stop. He's limping badly. Mark, what a gallant effort here today. It's a hot one today. Valvoline Cummins team did a great job today. We had a good car, but it wasn't good enough to beat the, about four of them out there. But They did a good job to get me in third, get me in second, and then Jeff Burton broke, and I just wanted to finish, so I backed off and I might have could have beat Jarrett, but I doubt it. I just needed to make it to the end. I'm pretty proud of this race team. We dug in and held our ground through all this. And we'll emerge, uh, hopefully, winning some races here, starting at Indy. Okay, we can't every American race fan, cookie. every American race fan is some proud of him. 